Hello, I am going to show you a few things I have on my desk while I'm drawing this big guy, Cody, who I am fortunate to live next door to. What a face, just all kinds of color to him and just great. Um, first of all, I wanted to show you how to use the slice tool properly because it's come to my attention that some people are not using it correctly. Some people are using a slice tool just to sort of cut in and make hairs. Yes, they're using it upside down and scraping and yes, that does give an impression of hairs. But the slice tool does so much more, especially if you're using the subtractive technique. Now, over time, I have tried several of them, the precision cutter and the pen cutter. And my favorite is the craft knife, and I'm currently using it with a rounded tip, although it does come with both. Brush your crumbs away with a paper towel tissue or with your Swiffer because they, um, would smear. Also, I have one of these clear acetate um, project holders, project covers, that is right under my hand. So when you're using the subtractive technique, let me just show you briefly what that is. I am going to make some marks as well as erase some marks. Oh, you all are using your Tombow mini eraser. But what I find is that that leaves a gummy residue on my picture. And it's one more thing I'm trusting my little sweeper to pick up. So I take these regular um, erasers. These are by Pentel. Um, get a whole box of them for a couple of dollars. And then I can cut them away into the shape I need, a point, an angle whatever I need, or just a clean edge when I've worn it down. And when you erase in to your color pencil, you create more of that warp and weft that a paper has. Now it's not enough that you would feel it. I don't feel anything when I'm running over this, but my colors will find their way into that. And you really can't successfully use the slice tool until you have done several layers. Now, when I have several layers down, then I can take my tool, again, use it upside down. I have cut a hole right through the eye of some poor animal by using it the wrong way. And turn your paper. Where, where would you like the hair to go? Where do you need Where do you need the angle of the hair growth? And you can do your scraping in, brushing away, already looks better. But now when I come back to find whether I'm finding some of my little darks in here or whether I've exposed an area to put in a light. Uh, here's where I'm going to get a little more of that real hair look. Hair is layers and layers and layers deep. And so without drawing it in layers and layers and layers, you're not going to get the full effect of, um, of real fur. So I'm going to focus in just a little bit more and continue on with what I started here on the nose. Yes, it's a black nose and I'm using a dark gray. I'm also using something I searched for forever. Derwent Artist Pencils made the most fabulous set of pencils. We have black and we have uh, like a dark indigo and a forest, pure white, arctic white, and oyster. So you've got warm and cool whites and blacks for those of you who like to really get the um, different tones within 
your blacks and whites. And then I can come in and give some of these special little marks that whether they are going to, like I said, be dark or be light. After many layers of this will appear to be the real dog fur, not just a scraping in to a picture. I want it to look like a real animal, not like a drawing of an animal. Oh yes, it's a drawing, but I always do that with my people too. I want real skin. I don't want just painted skin. So this is how you get the real fur look. And uh, I will give you an update when Cody is done. Thanks for watching.